Racer here, welcome everybody. If we can get this zoom on this scale mice, it'll be pretty cool. There we are. This is not a kind of lens attachment you want. All right, the, the acid has just melted the camera and the moss. Just gonna zoom out here. Cheers sis, thanks for this awesome lens. This is a little mini muff garden after, what's it been, two and a half summers. And it's looking pretty fantastic. I'm just gonna get some light in here. And we can get a nice, awesome close up. I mean, look at that. It's just marvelous. We could uh, do with some more lighting here. I just don't have a lot on hand at the moment. We can get some super zoomed in as well. Holy moly. That scale moss, probably one of my favorites. From like the original, from like what got me in to moss itself, was just scale moss in my backyard, playing with little model planes. Those little like model kits, you glue them together, you don't paint them, and then you crash them into the backyard, set them on fire with cigarette lighters. And then have G.I. Joe's and little army men and micro machines run around with the ambulances trying to rescue them. And that's a story for another life. But that is essentially what got me into childhood. <laughs> Correction. Moss. <laughs> Life got me into childhood. If we get a bit of brightness. Let's see if the light works on this one. Yeah. It's very temperamental this one. So I'll try to try and hold in the sweet spot. There we are. It doesn't bring much light. But, this little glowing dot in the middle here, this is the suborbital cannon for the moss. Using the uh, magnifying glass lens, it can uh, shoot lasers up to about 13,000 feet into the air. I'm totally, just totally bullshitting you there, so don't quote me on that one. This is a nice piece of rock. Um, Basalt and possibly bluestone from Durban Parklands. Basically, the start of the 19th, not the 19th century, 1920s, 1930s or something. Apparently, there was a quarry down there. And then um, mechanical water falling um, pumps that would drive the water up to the top ponds, which are now all the duck ponds at Durban Parklands. So this piece here is off one of those big rocks that they basically took out of the quarry didn't like it, dumped it on the down the slide on the back side of the hill at the um, top of the Durban Parklands. Been growing this one for about a year and a half, I think. Uh, there is patches around here where there's no moss, and that's where I actually gave a blast under the tap and blew off all the um, delicate moss. If you grow moss inside, it's going to grow a lot like stringier and leggier. It's not going to be like hugging, it's not going to be hugging down like this. So if you want your moss to hug, you got to spray it regularly or have it outside where the water can hit it. And that moss will then know it's going to get washed away so it'll really anchor into the rock or the mud or these black socks. And it'll prevent it from just having these f like fluffy spongy layers that's just top, top layer only. And they can be brushed off quite easily. The... Um, Giant light globe one that I got here. Well, a giant globe. That should be on the top of that, but then I found it just creates too much moisture. That can help things rot. It can help the algal, the algae in here go into algal blooms. That's not great. So I've just left the top open. It actually does retain a fair bit of like moisture in there that you can even just feel it just putting your hand in. That is a, uh, a dead Australian air. Cicada shell with its head missing. He had a big party when he came out of that hole in the ground to uh, shed his skin. Oh my god, it looks like it's alive. Bring us more rotting plant material. Feed us! And right down here, where's my pointing stick? Alright, so... 
pointing stick. This is a toothbrush with some kind of bendy wire on the end of a cleaning scrubber. So this moss around here was originally one stalk and like five leaves kind of coming off it. I planted that, tried to transfer in the same kind of environment I found it in, which was right on the riverbank up in the alpine regions while I was fishing with my dad. And it'll branch out on one stem and at the moment it's like re populating itself now that it's got that good like rootstock sorted sorted up settled and sorted out and so now that's going to come back and i'm going to have these cool little stick up and little fingers coming out kind of like palm tree fronds or something i also did find a big giant um aqua aquatic aqua worm water worm something swimming in here around on the side parts like literally just swimming around there. You see this little tail go through it. It's just like anaconda, but only if you're the size of an ant would you be scared. But like any little tiny microscopic bugs in there, the ones with those antennas, gray backs, look like little scaly six-legged walkie aphids. I don't know. Let's call them moss aphids because they basically are. They live all over the moss. And so sometimes you'll be getting... Moss aphids chilling up around here. They were chilling there in the uh, in the shade. When you turn this whole bowl around, then they'll just they'll just scatter because they didn't like that light much. They're like moisty parts. Like they'll be in here. I got one down here. They'll be crawling around on this rock. I did just find a. I don't know if it was an infestation of slimy mud moss worms, but basically. Can we get a zoom on a worm? Where's a worm? Yo, worms, where you at, homies? Okay, so here we are. Let's see if I can get some zoom on that. All right, so these little things here are the worms. They have like little black heads, a squiggly caterpillar-like body, and when they're young, they swim around like larvae in the water. Water in the bowl's dried up until I fill it again. So they ain't going nowhere. Then when they get old enough, they turn into some kind of caterpillar grub. They get into the moss here. They burrow under that top layer. And then they weave those little like cocoony looking like tunnels through stuff. And then they'll just start periodically munching up, eating all the moss and then caterpillar shitting in the backfield trench. I kind of don't like them because they really ruin like these types of moss that I'm growing in the socks. Um, I haven't had much problems with them on this. I did in the early days where they'd live in the wet gravel here. And then they'd crawl up and then they'd burrow. I've now been able to get rid of them because this moss has got leggy enough that it's grown up. And then you don't have to worry about worms popping up in here because all the moss is about at least is a centimetre or a bit less off the um, surface of the mud and debris. So that doesn't give him much of a home. In here I haven't found I haven't found any of them. So it's really moist. So there is a um, small regular household jumping spider. It does live around here somewhere and he'll patrol up and down. Sometimes you'll see him up here. I think he has it actually. Yeah, he's living up here at the moment somewhere. And sometimes you'll see him on the outside of the bowl. But uh, yeah, basically this is the moss collection. There is way more outside and a lot of dust blowing in from the bushfires getting stuck in the uh, rain yesterday and sticking all over my glass. So in a Windex of that, if I want to have people over, like the queen, maybe she might appreciate it. So yeah, here's the outdoors. Can't really see much, but we got big cactus. He's like, doesn't get root rot. These guys suffer from root rot terribly. They're little squat short cactuses. This one is a, uh, what is it? Oh, a little spiky succulent. Same here. Uh, more of my long stringy leggy cactuses with the flame red uh, flowers. Same here. Same here. Same over there. Same underneath these ones. Next door. I then do have the white ball. Basically there's water on top of that. 
and any of the moss underneath it inside the ball will have this nice moist sealing of uh, water vapor above it and is really nice and wet and it actually grows better around and uh, not directly underneath the other uh, glass lampshade or whatever it is, the outdoor light cover. It doesn't grow as well and uh, the tips kind of get heat burned and dry back and die. So maybe putting a glass cover over it will actually help all of it grow. And so that'll be something we're looking into next time I'm out there doing my gardening. And uh, yeah, hope you found this interesting. If you did, leave a comment or a like. Or leave nothing because it's your life. And if you didn't like and you want to say so, tell me moss gardening is crap. Then absolutely go for it. Live life your way, because I'm just here living mine. This is Racer. I'll catch you later.